Open standards are part of the infrastructure of the internet and of the web. Uh, when they work well, it's easy to ignore them and uh, keep the traffic moving, uh, but they require maintenance and they require the participation of uh, a large community to uh, keep them functioning. We don't want a bridge collapse or uh, a tunnel to fall in, uh, so we need to invite the uh, broad participation in crafting the standards uh, that, that keep the internet traffic flowing. What has happened over the last 25 years that free and open source uh, movement has become so successful that there is not a question now that whether there is a, whether there is a smartphone you are using, whether it's a television you are watching, whether it's a router in your house, or it is a web server, or it is a server in your company, or something you are using somewhere which does not have free and open source software. Free software and open source software uh, use free as in freedom. Uh, software that is uh, free for anyone to uh, take and modify and adapt to, to reuse in uh, new and unexpected ways. Uh, it shouldn't require permission to uh, take a piece of free software and uh, find something new to, to do with it. Uh, and then uh, most members of the free and open source software communities uh, believe in taking that and uh, sharing it again so that others can build on, on their modifications. And the beauty of free and open source software movement is that people like collaboration, people like sharing, and people know that when five of us work together, we make a better product. When 50 of us work together, then we can find the problems in that product. When 500 and 5,000 and 5 million of us work together, then all bugs are shallow. Then we can find problems all the time in it and keep fixing that thing. And also people, enjoy learning together, teaching each other, working together. And such collaboration sharing economy cannot happen by one IBM, one Oracle, one Hewlett Packard. No one company has the resources to hire people and motivate them to create something because they love it and create a Linux kernel or Apache web servers on which 70% of the web runs today or Facebook and Google would not be possible if it were not for these cheap raw materials, which the community said, we all love it, we think the software is great, hey, take it, use it if you like it. If you really, really like it, make 50 CDs out of it and give it to everyone in your family. Don't pay me for each license, that's not what I wanted. Just improve it, tell me what's wrong with it, and we will all improve it together. If you are not technically adept, I will do it for you, because I like it or I know it. That's free and open source software for you. Uh, the openness of, of open standards uh, refers to the way those standards are uh, derived uh, through open and public processes where uh, contributions are uh, invited from uh, around the, the, the ecosystem, uh, where participation is, is widely open, uh, where the standards themselves are developed uh, in public and in, invite public comment, uh, and then where the, the, the standards uh, themselves are uh, made available to uh, those who want to use and, and implement them. Uh, so an open standard can be implemented uh, in open source software and in proprietary software, and the value of the open standard uh, is that it allows them to uh, interface and talk to one another. Uh, so products made by different companies in different countries and uh, users speaking different languages uh, can all interface uh, with one another uh, through the open standards. Our internet is based on one essential building block. We use the same standard for communicating with each other, and this TCP IP protocol is freely available. It is like the standard of shipping containers. We all use the same form, and that is how trade over the world is being done. 
If some would change their containers in, for instance, triangles, only the ports that would accept these new containers would be available for trade. In that way, groups would become secluded from the open web. And this would be detrimental to the fundamentals of our free cyberspace. Proprietary software is usually used to refer to um, closed methods uh, of development, um, often done in, in corporate environments uh, where, you know, some person or group of people develop software, uh, compile it down to a binary, uh, the, the ones and zeros of computer code, uh, and release only that binary, usually with licensing terms that uh, say, uh, you can't copy this, you must not modify this, uh, you must only use it individually, you can't pass it on. Um, and uh, that's saying, basically, you get a product um, in a black box and you accept the box or you don't, but uh, you can't open it up and, and see how it works. For some products, that may be a fine way uh, of operation. If you trust, if, if you get outputs that match the inputs you expected and uh, the product does what you want, uh, that, that may work. And there are environments and places where uh, that's uh, a fine way of uh, of, of building software and profiting from it. Um, at, at the same time, it, it doesn't uh, give the, the, the freedom and opportunity to, to modify and learn from and build upon the software uh, that an open source development would, where uh, not only the binary but also the source code that was used to produce it uh, are released. The importance of privacy, which to my mind has three components. One is autonomy, and the other is secrecy, and then is anonymity. These three are not going to be possible without encryption. And these three are not going to be possible without technological, te technical developers, technology developers who themselves understand the importance of the, these three things working out and telling people that all you can trust is any software which is made in transparency. If you know what is in there, trust it. If you don't know what is in there, you cannot be sure who was in there because somebody has to have been in there. Mathematics uh, is the basis of uh, the security that underlies uh, commercial transactions on the web, payments uh, that underlies uh, the sharing of, of, of information, uh, enabling companies to do multi-billion dollar transactions uh, over the public internet. Uh, their communications may be traveling uh, over public networks, but only the intended parties uh, can read those messages. Just the most recent uh, news story uh, we've seen on this front is the weakening of some uh, American cryptographic products uh, due to export regulations. Uh, so uh, time was uh, the US government had uh, rules restricting the export of strong cryptography. And so uh, American companies developing encryption products uh, had an export key length that was shorter and therefore weaker uh, than the domestic uh, key length. It's inexcusable to, for uh, parties who say they're acting in the public interest uh, to weaken encryption. Participation uh, is critical to, to the development of privacy and security technologies and uh, to preserving privacy uh, and security. We, as individuals, need to be stakeholders in the protection of our information and our communications. And um, I think, well, Lately, it may feel as though we keep on learning about places that our privacy is dead, that our information is collected in, in ways that, that, that we hadn't anticipated. It's only by learning that and uh, be becoming concerned about it uh, that we can, can act to change it. 
We can build technologies to protect our privacy, uh, but we'll only be using those technologies if we as people uh, demand them, and if we as uh, actors in the marketplace demand it of those who are supplying products to it and uh, demand it of those who are supplying us communication technologies and demand it of our governments in transparency and uh, privacy protecting laws. Education and communication uh, about the, the, the challenges and needs for privacy uh, are critical. And, and, and privacy is sort of a, a critical component of freedom of thought and freedom of association and freedom of, of action. So uh, we all need to be thinking through the places that, that we depend on, on privacy and then uh, demanding technologies that will give it to us. Thank <laughs> you.